Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scene tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Welcome to Inside the Firm. This is your actual host because I am on the east side of the table with my co-host on the west side of the table, little Al Gore. Little tiny Al Gore. We don't know who's smaller, me or Nick. We we have a... It's hard. It's hard. Well, maybe we'll never know. Maybe. We've never, on the mic, he's huge. Yes. That's what, that's what they say. In person, tiny. Small. Put him in a pocket. Speaking of tiny things with a big punch, RevitRocketship.com. If you do not know Revit, want to up your skills, are looking into modeling maybe for a house rather than a commercial structure, if you're looking to uh, learn how to model uh, to mimic as construction works, if you're looking to improve your skills, uh, if you just want the confidence to be able to get things done, go check it out, RevitRocketShip.com. There, Lance and I teach you all those skills. Plus, we give you our template that we work with, and at the end, We have additional videos about how to start your project after you've learned all these skills in bite-sized chunks. Go to RevitRocketChip.com. And make that happen. Absolutely. That's what you got to do. You have to do it. You have to do it. You know what else you need to do? I don't. You you, you need to go to RCAT.com. But you know why you need to go to RCAT.com? Because Alex Jones is there. He's not there. <laughs> this it, this episode is now completely deleted off of. It's been banned. Off of. Uh, I mentioned his name. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy Alex Jones. Uh, Arcat.com is your one stop shop for everything specifications related, uh, building information modeling rig related, CAD related. If you are looking for a manufacturer specific window, a manufacturer-specific door, a manufacturer-specific railing. That's probably one of my favorite parts of all the railings that are on there. Uh, yours surely did most of them. Yeah. Go to arcat.com today. Stop. Quit wasting time. That's A-R-C-A-T.com and start building better content today. What is this M-A-D-S bot license? Oh, you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. So it's M-A plus D-S. Yep. Spot license. So... Yeah, in the show notes, what Al, what Al is talking about, little old Lance, he has something listed as MA plus DS, Spotlight Home, is worth it. What the heck does that mean, Lance? Well, let me tell you what it means. It means that our good friend over at um, the Modern Architecture Plus Design Society, Ken Shawcross, uh, these guys are great folks. You guys should check them out if you're doing custom residential uh, homes. Check them out because uh, they can either get your clients or let's say you built a cool, awesome, modern home with your wife, like my, like yours truly, on their home tours. So they that's how I got in touch with these guys about two or three years ago. They actually contacted us. They said, hey, do you have any homes that want to be on the, on the Boulder modern home tour? I said, yes, we live near Boulder, Boulder County. Come, uh, come look at our house. And so our house was on the list. Uh, we've actually, and then it was on the tour and we put... Um, uh, we talked about this in a previous episode, but why I'm talking about it today is then what they did because of COVID is they started doing uh, um, online spotlights. So you could pay a small fee and they would do this sick write up. And they have other connections that you might not have connections to, and they have other people and publications uh, watching them that you might not have connections to. So one of those connections. We are, I'm proud to announce that we are going to be the, fe- we're, our project, East Watch House, is going to be the featured project in Builder Magazine in the January issue. They're going to produce for us like a six to eight page spread. If anybody, if any of you have ever taken out a full page ad, you know how much six to eight pages in a magazine of that caliber would cost you. Yeah. The publicity is phenomenal. So, but, and, and so think about it this way, and I'll just flat out tell you. I think it cost us about 500 bucks to do this spotlight home interview uh, or, or spotlight with uh, MAD, MA plus DS, Modern Architecture Plus Design Society. It was all over the web and um, people have seen it. But then then the editors over at Builder, Builder Magazine saw it and now they're going to feature our house on it. And what that translate to, translates to 
is about two thousand dollars a page. I, I have actually asked them exactly what they're what they charge, but in working with other publications like Modern in Denver, I know back in the day that's what it was. So that's like twelve thousand to sixteen thousand dollars worth of advertising. Yep. So for five hundred dollars. So think about the return on that, right? That is what is, what kind of return? I'm not gonna let you talk, Al. Tw- 200, 240% return. No, no, no. 24,000% return, right? Right. 24 times. So I read that article. I obviously know that house and it was a good, good write-up. So like just the copy editing alone, you know, can cost some money. Why, why we're kind of laying this out is to give you sort of the behind the scenes because our good friend, Nick Renard talked to us and he might be telling us that we are a hypocrite. Right. Oh, really? Because oh, he, he paid for media. That's right. But do you remember what he asked us? Mm-hmm. Some publication was putting together and it was obviously oh, Nick. Yep. Nick does great work. Right. So like it, it deserves being here. Um, this house, East watch, whatever you're calling it on that website deserves being there. It's, it's really good architecture. And I only say that because Lance was doing the majority of it, even though I made two key decisions, but one, that was one about key it. decision was just only showing one floor plan. And that was pretty key. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but he, he asked us, I think it was like $2,000 or 4,000 or $6,000 for a couple of his projects to be in this book. And the reason one, that price is way too high. And two, the, the reach of print media, I don't think is the same as internet media. So like, I think we said, oh, I want to do it. And I, I don't think I would pay $6,000 to be in a book or whatever it was. Even if it was a No, you pay $500 to M8 plus DS <laughs> and you get published. <laughs> Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> Al's tired. I am tired. He went up to the mountains and down and that exhausts a guy. Yeah. And I got to work tomorrow too. So I'm grumpy. <laughs> oh. So, um, but other than that, I'm fine. I'm actually fine. Yeah. Um, but it's been a busy day. Uh, anyways, what so, did I, sorry, I keep interrupting you. You know why? why? This side of the table. Interrupting Al normally sits on that side of the table. What What were you going to say? Oh. I don't know. I interrupted you. Oh, okay. I, I just wanted to lay out the prices and the options. Oh, okay. We might not be correct. Maybe $4,000 in a book is worth it. Mm. Um, but I've also, where are they? There's one, two, two books right <laughs> over there. Uh, the Idiot's Guide to Tiny Homes we're in. And then mobile architecture. We're in two of those books. We didn't pay a book. We didn't pay a dime to be in those books. Oh, do you know we're in an upcoming documentary? Now I do. Okay. (laughs) Also did not pay a dime. I don't know what's what's coming out. I better add this to my IMDB because I am technically an actor, Al. (laughs) And you. Yes. (laughs) The architecture. I'm going to email. But yeah. Yeah. What are you? I think you did tell me about this documentary. What is it for? Tiny house stuff? Doomsday Doomsday stuff. Nice. Doomsday stuff. So, um, I should follow up when, when it's going to be out or how we can access it. Yeah. Anyways, didn't pay a dime for it, but this we did. Yeah, we did pay and it paid off. I'm telling you. So think about if you can go down that route. Uh, just super helpful. I, I'm so stoked about it. And to, to piggyback on top of this idea about uh, print versus it's always cool to have something tangible like I'm in a magazine. But the other the other thing is it is going to be online. So they they do publish this online series. So like you're covering best of both worlds at that point. Um, I think it's I think it's a win win. So so make that happen. Uh, what else are we? What's the next thing? Oh, oh, I have something. There you go. Al, he's tired. He doesn't have anything. I got all kinds of energy. Yeah. So what I want to talk about was um, how to address address additional services during contract negotiations. Some of you may not have this line, may not have um, a a bullet point or something or a clause in your contract that says uh, that you will be going on additional services after you submit to a building department. Mm. We do. I do. It's I just do. If, if they won't agree to it, we're out of here. I've already said that a couple times on this podcast. But I wanted to lay it out exactly how to tackle it, okay? Uh, because I got, I was, I landed two projects this week. Um, one is a, uh, this little interior tenant finish. It still work. We're happy to do it. Um, and so what, what she asked was, let me see what this potential client asked. Let me go back. I think it's a different email thread. I should have had it up one sec. I'll get to it. We'll get to it. There it is. Okay. So the question to me was, what is the likelihood of being charged the additional rates listed above your signature block. I was under the impression the fee was for all-inclusive 
an all-inclusive price for stamp drawings, working with the MEP engineering firm so we can obtain permitting. So basically our, our little clause says, uh, once we once we submit to the building department, um, after that we're on an hourly basis to address their comments. And that used to not be the case. And their assumption used to be correct. I agree. But. But it's not. But. And, here's, and here's how you tackle it. So what I said is, for this project, uh, because she asked, remember, remember to repeat was, what is the likelihood of being charged the additional rates? For this project, wait, is wait, what city is it in? Littleton. Oh, I don't trust. I don't trust. No. For <laughs> for this for this project, it is very low. It's pretty straightforward. The problem we have been seeing over and over again with nearly all building departments up and down the front range is that the turnover for plans reviewers has been pretty steady, meaning that they were when a newbie comes in, they throw a whole new set of comments at us that we have likely never seen before, or are not applicable. Or not, Sorry. but I didn't say that. I or know. if they are staff that have been there for a while, they will attend some new seminar and then think they need to comment with all of those new comments. But again, for this project, because it is so simple, I really don't anticipate many comments, but can't be 100% sure of that. So we need a small safety valve in case it gets a little weird. Does that make sense? She replied, Lance, please return with your signature and I will forward this to her leasing office and get the initial deposit sent to you, exclamation point. Awesome. She said, yeah, that was it. That's all you had to did, say. She didn't, she didn't, there was no arguing. Yep, yep. I, I, I was going to say you almost w- want to say, and you could or not, that, I mean, why we have this clause is because they w- vary widely. That might scare them, but, like, it's the truth. You not can all, get Not all building departments are the same. You can get no comments. You can get delayed um 1.5 years 1. after 5 you have years. the building permit and 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 also just straight up denied just straight up denied it's happened happened yep it's happened yep okay stuff to happen uh People. it's still Lance stock in here change is good so uh i quit social media it's close generally quit social media on saturday al was uh how many months ahead of you were me uh, you on me on this oh Six almost months? a year almost a year because you watched that one movie, right? Nope, didn't even watch that. But okay, but you did watch that one movie, and then it also reinforced. No, I haven't. Because I quit Netflix too. Dang it, this guy! He's so far ahead of us. <laughs> Tell us what we should be doing, Al. <laughs> <laughs> I am in the future <laughs> oh right my now. God, you and Elon Musk are just yep. Yep. Cows. Oh, Bitcoin in 12 months, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, there we go. 60 to 600K. I love that you put it on Tw- record. 12 months right here. You heard me. You it's 11 it. 13 2020. Oh, so 12 man. 13, 12 12 2021 between those two numbers. There you go. Yeah. Take that to the bank. Besides, know that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is just allegorical predictions. Okay, but the movie that you... I, I hope I hope someone listens to this and I hope we totally forget and then they email us <laughs> I and, and with the price of Bitcoin. Nick, if you're not writing this down, you're not our best friend. Setting anymore. a calendar event. <laughs> What's Bitcoin? Email it to Al. Something. Um, so the movie you should watch is called The Social Dilemma. It is a it is a fantastic film. It's it's it was out on August 2020. I don't you can't watch, but if you're like Al and me actually, I I canceled Netflix too. Uh, you can't watch it, but you, you should find it somewhere and watch it. It goes through about what social media is doing to us. And it's just not, it's not good. So, but what I'm leading with this is, is that, um, so I think it was a bad habit, um, just in general of just looking at the phone, being constantly like waiting for notifications and getting the endor- endorphins from them. I'm still on LinkedIn if you want to link in with me. But that is so bland there. It's just not a big deal. Yeah, LinkedIn's LinkedIn is, is so boring. Yeah. It's good. It's a good boring. Yeah. Um, but what it led me to is it led me to what are some, what are some, I, I want to just examine seven bad habits. This wonderful article that I found, it's called Afron, tweak your biz mm. forward slash management forward slash bad business habits and see if we're doing them out. Oh, okay. I feel like there's a okay. good gut check time. Okay. okay. You this read is, them to me and then I'll, I'll see if we're doing them. Exactly. Number one. Number one, letting failure control you. As you probably know by now, failure is a major part of being an entrepreneur. You're going to make plenty of mistakes along the way and you're going to fail. When I was a young and inspiring entrepreneur, I wish more people told me that failure doesn't define you, your actions do. You can either make the best out of a bad bad situation or you can let failure control you. If you want to be a successful business owner, you have to be willing to accept failure. 
Instead of being consumed by failure, embrace it. Learn from your mistakes and use those lessons as a foundation for your company's success. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I would say I don't let it consume us because if I did, we'd probably be in turtle mode. Will you please tell us about the failure with the doors? <laughs> <laughs> So so everything worked out. It did. And it worked. And we didn't even really use that much time. No. One day, kind of. And that's why you're working tomorrow, isn't it? That is also (laughs) why I am working tomorrow. Because I didn't check the rough openings of the door because we poured a one and a half inch gypcrete over um, our radiant flooring. We didn't have enough head heights in the doors. Put the doors in. In the ROs. So Al's working Saturday. (laughs) And I'm so tiny. So it's, it's good that they're short. So that so if you're pouring gypcrete, you gotta account for that. Gotta account That's for that. That's an extra step. Gotta account for that. Okay. And then I wanna I I wanna blame the framers because they put in under the doors they put in a blocking. So it wasn't open all the oh, way down. I know, but you can't but, blame but the you framers. can't. That that's what I'm getting at. Is that you the can't. point? That, that you can't blame the framers? Yeah, yeah. And then also also if you see that it doesn't mean that they took the next logical step and be like, I just took an inch and a half off. Maybe I should raise the top an inch and a half. Did not do that. Sometimes your subs will give you that extra level of thinking, but don't count on it. Yeah. Okay, good. That was a good one now. Uh, staying in your comfort zone. <clears throat> your comfort is a, is a safe place, right? Wrong. Your comfort zone can be a dangerous place, especially for entrepreneurs. One bad habit you need to kick is staying in your comfort zone. Sure, it can feel great to play it safe, but being an entrepreneur being an entrepreneur is about all about taking risks and breaking out of your comfort zone. Not to mention, stepping out of your comfort zone has tons of perks. You can learn new businesses and life lessons, meet new people, grow yourself in your business, spark creativity and innovation, boost productivity, learn how to handle curveballs. I had to step out of my comfort zone when I started each one of my ventures, F9, F10, F11, F12, skip F13, F14, you don't even, I haven't even told you about F-15, Al. I'll admit it. It's an aircraft. <laughs> wasn't my favorite thing to do at first. But leaping outside of my comfort zone forced me to do things I never thought I would or could do. It made me a better business owner and led my companies down the path to success. Um, you, you have to step outside your comfort zone. Because if not, what it means is that you, you did it once, you learned what you needed to do, and then you stuck in there. Which means... Anyone else can replicate that. So you got to keep, even if you don't do different things, you got to keep growing on what you started. I, Al, honestly, didn't you, it didn't, didn't taking on 509 step out of your comfort zone? Cause remember you didn't want to, you were like, I don't want to, I don't want to build anymore. And then, oh uh, yeah, that's true. Okay. Look at Al. Look at Al. Yeah, yep. Now he's working on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear sweatpants. Sweatshirt to the, <laughs> okay. Micro- so I could be, so I could just sit there tomorrow. I'm in my comfort zone. Yeah. Micro I'm going to come visit you. Micromanaging your team. No, you won't be up early enough. That's true. Actually, that's a lie. You know why? I've been getting up. I've been, I, here's, here's something I've been doing also. Just one beer a night. Wow. That's it. Holy cow. Even on, not that I was boozing crazy, but I'm just uh, saying. You're a boozer. I'm just saying into the weekends. Right. Even tonight, like, I'm already, I'm on this podcast, I'm already drinking some, some bullshit Mountain Beach beer. It's like 2% alcohol. That's probably it. And yeah. then I'm going to wake up early and continue writing my book. So then I'm going to come visit you. You want to, you kept asking me about the future. When you start, stop drinking, you will also be in Al's future. Jeez. Wow. How far away until it takes uh, you? I don't know. I got a lot of room. I got a lot of, I got to catch up. Yeah. I don't even know if I can catch him at this point. You can still do it for events, stuff like that. Elon is going to be on Mars and Al will be on the moon and I'll just be stuck down here. Yeah. Like, ah, what's happening? <laughs> happening to me this one this one i really like uh to think about micromanaging your team because i'm do i feel like i do the opposite do you find yourself constantly hovering over your employees or co-workers as i like to call them do you have trouble delegating tasks if either or both of these are true you might have a wicked case of micromanagement no one likes a micromanager especially your co-workers if you're wondering what's holding your business back from success, ask yourself, am I a micromanager? Not sure if you have micromanager characteristics. I've got you covered. Here's some signs that you're being a micromanager. Mm. One, you don't trust employees to do tasks on their own. Two, coworkers avoid you. Time out. If you don't trust ta- workers 
to do tasks on their own. Why, why do you do, have? Why do you have them? Why do you have them? Yeah. Good grief. Yeah. Uh, number three, you have the urge to control everything. Four, you check in with employees multiple times a day. If you find that you're being a micromanager, take a step back, have some faith that your team can handle tasks without you breathing down their necks. And remember, you hired your employees for a reason. Trust that they know what they're doing and let them know that they can come to you with questions. There you go. I don't do it. I do the opposite. That was that. You don't even have to comment on this, Al. I feel like I've been doing the opposite lately of just like getting a little annoyed. I'm mean, like, just do it. Do the. I'm, I trust you. I, I've been having to. Here's. I've been finding myself saying over and over again, weekly, if if not maybe a couple times a week. I trust you, guys. I trust you. Go for it. Yeah. I just. I trust you. I make make that happen. Yeah. So I don't know. Some reason I need to figure out how to like give people more confidence. Maybe uh, taking on too much at once. Uh, we do that. Oh, we do that. Okay. As an entrepreneur, you're constantly trying to keep up with all of the spinning plates, and you may feel like with one wrong turn, a plate can come crashing to the ground. Entrepreneurs tend to spin too many plates, aka take on too many tasks at once. As a seasoned entrepreneur, I've definitely been there, and at some point. You probably will be too. Studies show that multitasking can reduce productivity as much as 40%. Focus on handling one project at a time instead of juggling multiple tasks at once. I know, I know, easier said than done, right? But the more you do, the easier it will get. So, uh, yeah. I felt like with the development, we almost, we did too much. Uh, We took on too much at once. Um, I mean, we got through it. Everybody's already heard about that. Uh, But... There is value, and I was already talking to you about this when you and I went to lunch yesterday. Was it's like in it's like if you if you've played a sport, you don't. I don't think you appreciate resting. Really, you don't appreciate resting until you've played a sport or something like that. And if you're doing a sport, remember you were in practice and you were doing sprints, and the coach was yelling, and you could not wait to get done, and you just completely wore yourself out. Maybe even threw up. And then once you were done, you were like, oh, man, I really enjoy resting now. Yeah. So uh, perspective. For, uh, blaming, uh, next one, blaming others for your mistakes. When you so maybe 50-50. <laughs> I, I blame other people. Let's talk about how, why. why I, here's what I think that is. We don't even have to go. I won't read that. I won't read yeah. that one. We'll just talk about the headline here. Blaming others for your mistakes. Do you think it's a coping mechanism that you have? Because I do it too. Do you think it's a, and here's what I'm going with it is. Do you think it's a coping mechanism where in you first you will just like you it's sort of like part like the seven steps of grief or whatever and the one is anger and part of anger is like I want to blame somebody else. Yep. Until I'm ready to admit it was my mistake. Uh correct. But then also here's in the defense of like I I, I don't know if this is totally healthy, but I I it, if you if you study the world if you said the the saying is um the, what what is it there's a, a a million ways to skin a cat yes or, or whatever it is which, which is, is weird t- terrible terrible saying because it's who's, fish it's the million ways to skin a fish no is it okay. yeah yeah so who's skinning cats but th- that's where that's where it comes is is normally it's a reaction to hey you skin the cat this way like yeah but that doesn't mean i can't skin the cat the other way there's a million ways to do it so then, it, then, then it's them blaming me, then me blaming them back. That's normally where it comes from. Oh, okay. That, that's, that's, that's where it's a 50-50. Okay, but the example I literally just thought about when I read blaming others for your mistakes yeah. and, you, and you were talking is <clears throat> the doors. I want to blame the framers. Oh, yeah, but it was my fault. Right. But yeah. I'm sa- what I'm saying is when yeah, you said I, I want to blame the framers, isn't that a coping mechanism? Right. Okay. Right. But that's where I don't blame it. Like, that was on me. Yeah. Even though, like... I should probably call Chencho and just tell him so he doesn't do it again. Well, Gio. Yeah. Uh, okay, last one. Being a perfectionist. <laughs> I would have measured those doors if I was a perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let me think about this because I thought there was, I thought there was, well, there are, um, I I have to wonder if some people are not, they never, they don't ever want to take the leap to go start their own business because they just think about it too much, which is a, which is part of being a perfectionist. So like, you know, even writing a business plan, I know you're supposed to, we never have. (laughs) 
Like we kind of do now. I mean, a business plan now in a good example of that internally would be we're writing a proposal. We've thought about the numbers, um, how long it's going to take and everything. Uh, but yeah, I don't th- throw perfection out the window and don't be afraid to falter is kind of the last sentence of this paragraph or this, this article. And I think that's, that's what you got to do because otherwise you're just, you're never going to, it's feel, I feel like you're just going to tread water because you're like, Oh, I'm not swimming perfectly. Okay. Now I got to go back to treading water. Well, and here's the other problem with over planning. You can plan, plan, and then also practice. Practice is probably more beneficial than just, just planning. But you know, planning's last as long until you get punched in the face. It's true. That's how that's how, that's how long your plans last. And if you're doing anything of worth, probably gonna get punched in the face. <laughs> oh, got it, got it. Meaning it's gonna be difficult because if it was easy, someone else would do it. Mm-hmm. Then if it was too easy, then you'd be in competition, and the price would be so low. Now it's a commodity; it's not even worth doing unless you have massive scale. Boom. He just rattled that off. Huh? Let's listen to what this guy has to rattle off next. Here's Nick. Nick reads. Hello, best friends. I hope you all had a great week this week. I'm reading. We should understand well that all things are the work of the great spirit. We should know the great spirit is within all things. The trees, the grasses, the rivers, the mountains, and the four-legged and winged peoples. And even more important, we should understand that the Great Spirit is also above all these things and peoples. When we do understand all this deeply in our hearts, then we will fear and love and know the Great Spirit. And then we will be and act and live as the Spirit intends. A quote by Black Elk. Toodles! Ow. Was Black Elk a good Indian or... uh, Black Elk actually wasn't too bad. He was good. He might have shot with an arrow a couple white people. Okay. But maybe they deserved it. Maybe they didn't. (laughs) It was tricky back in the day. Tricky back in the day. There's two tattoos I want to get. But I, oh, wow, you're 35. But I probably won't because I do not get tattoos. So yeah. like the history of it is like I'm probably not going to get it. Yeah. And uh, I won't tell you one, but the other one. So I think I've told you this before. Almost a, a lot of Native Americans names for themselves mm-hmm. translate to the people. Right. Like Sue means the people. Well, technically not, but. Navajo, they'd call themselves the, the Dene. Um, you know, the Jewish says that they're the chosen people. So, like, everyone thinks of themselves as the people or the chosen people. It's interesting reading these different books, like, oh, another tribe, same thing, another tribe. So, like, just the Dene, the people. That's pretty badass. I think, I, ladies and gentlemen, if I get five emails to <laughs> lmc at f9productions.com, you'll he, pay he, for it? He's got, yeah. <laughs> Al's got to get a tattoo. Uh, <laughs> speaking of tattoos, <laughs> you you could go to Revit Rocket Ship and not get a tattoo <laughs> and learn save some your, skills. You, save your money by not getting a tattoo and go to RevitRocketShip.com. Get a skill that will then earn you money. Uh, RevitRocketShip.com. Also, if and then if let's say you don't, let's say you don't go to RevitRocketShip.com, then you have to get a tattoo. No, <laughs> yeah, I want you to take just breathe. And go, well, okay. It's kind of like t- counting backwards from 10 to 1. I'm all worked up about getting a tattoo. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to give those guys a five star review on the iTunes app <sighs> inside the firm. iTunes, five star review. We'll talk to you oh, next week. But if you don't do that, you have to get a tattoo. Then you have to get a tattoo. Gotcha. Talk to you next week.